What's going on, y'all? So What's going on, y'all? So we are back for the season finale of Delilah. This is uh season one, episode one. Well, episode eight. I don't know why the guy says nine, but it's really episode eight, the long game. Bitch, um, Leela Leela need her ass whoop, okay? That my eye twitching. That is basically the moral of this uh episode for me, okay? Because wait a minute, no, I ain't even gonna say it for this episode for this season, Leah needs her ass. Okay, or at least just slap the bitch, okay? Because each and every episode, ever since she came into the picture, we have been finding out information after information after information that she has been holding back. So last week, we ended the episode with, you know, uh, Cindy Shea basically saying, bitch, you know, I met you before uh, Gary committed suicide and all that stuff. He died the next day. Okay, fine. You know, Delilah want to know, what else did you do for Fred? Was you over there giving him your looking crannies and all that stuff? What did you do? Did you play a part up in um, Gary's suicide and stuff like that? Bitch, that offended Leah. Leah was like, no, girl, that's not what happened. She was like, well, girl, tell me what happened. So I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to do all this work for you, okay? Do you understand that? You know, Leah like, <sighs> okay, girl. So what had happened was... When I came to you and um tried to get you to take this case, I couldn't convince you. So I went over there to Gary. You know, Gary, he's such a nice man or whatever. And I was just trying to see if he would come along. Boy, I was like, you know, finally you start thinking that he was going to, uh, that Delilah was going to take it. So I was like, okay, Gary, come on board and help me out with this. And, you know, um, he said he would. But, you know, I was a crime mess or whatever. So that's probably why he went on ahead and said yes. And then, you know, truth be told... I kind of feel like it's my own fault. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> she was like, girl, your fault for what? The fact that he killed himself. You know, maybe I guilted him into doing something. You know what I'm saying? And so at this point, at this point, Delilah is trying to get Leah to just be like, listen, I swear on a testimony. I testify we can take this to court or whatever. We're not going to settle. Leah is hell bent on settling. Okay. And she was like, bitch, give me a second. I just got a message that just came up on my phone that just, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I'm back. Don't try me. Do not try me. And that's what somebody just did. I'm sorry. Let me get back in mode, Okay. So, basically, you know, Leah don't want to go to court. Leah want that settlement check. I'm sitting here like, damn, Leah, on the one hand, I get it. But on the other hand, I want somebody that did wrong, and I know that he, she, he did wrong. I want them to go ahead and get what, you know, some consequences gone, you know, happen to them or whatever. Because it's affecting a whole bunch of people. And truth be told, she probably could have got a little change. She probably, probably would have got a little bit more change. I don't know how the legal system works. I ain't never been in trouble or whatever. Could have got some little change or whatever. You know, it no matter what the amount was, it would have been more than she's ever seen before and it would have definitely helped her out regardless of what it was you know she could have got a little chain chain a little something, something um if they would have went to court too but no leah is thinking about herself leah is um just being a naive bitch okay i'm just sorry i just had to put it out there so the next day she come up there for the mediation and you know they waiting on delilah to get there Okay, and so she's in the room, uh, in the conference room or whatever, the lobby with Harper. And Harper was just trying to tell her, listen, you know, Miss Connolly, you know, she took my case uh, and five years ago. And, you know, instead of just, we tried to fight it out, but I wound up settling. And um, that was one of the worst decisions that I made. I don't think that you need, you know, basically trying to convince her without saying, please don't settle, you know, by using herself as an example, you know, to not to settle. Okay. Of course, Leah ain't really hearing this because at this point, Delilah walked in. So the conversation got cut short, but we got the gist of what Harper was trying to do without directly saying, girl, please don't settle. Okay. You're going to regret the shit. You know what I'm saying? Don't do it. You know? And so they go into the mediation. And we got um, the judge, Judge Morrison, which is a black lady. I was like, all right, and girl power. <laughs> and then we got Tamara. Okay, listen, Fred, they was waiting on Fred to get up in there. And Delilah told Tamara, what I need you to tell Fred, if we're going to go ahead and do this settlement or whatever, 
I need you to tell him to put up in their um, place or whatever that Leah did not get fired. If we're going to do all this, she did not get fired because of insubordination and because she was late and all this stuff. We can't put that up in there. Okay. That's not what we're going to do. And, uh, well, that's what we need him to say that that's, that wasn't the reason that she got fired. And, you know, Tamara was looking at her like, girl, please don't do this to me. Like, I'm having to struggle with this man all this time or whatever. Please, girl, you know, I can't, I can't, they're not going to do it. That's how she was looking at her without doing all what I did. But that's what her facial expressions were saying. But then she just gave in. She was like, I'll try. I'll try. I said, my baby is over there just, <sighs> boo-boo is over there just stressed out. And I don't like it, Okay. I don't like it, you know. I was like, fuck this case. I said, for the sake of y'all friendship, just fuck this case, okay? Fuck Leah at the point, at this point, because that bitch just, ugh, at this point. All right, girl. So they go into mediation, and the judge tell them what they need to do. Bitch, when Fred got there, and he was talking to Harper, Harper was like, yeah, they in the conference room right over there. Fred said, that's the conference room? I said, no, you not finna be looking your nose down at this office. Fred got on my goddamn nerves. Like, his subtle and indirect and direct racism and prejudices was coming out in this whole particular part, okay? When he said that, and then he was like, hmm, Carpet said, is there a problem? He was like, no, it's cute. <laughs> and we all know what, it's cute. You know, we ain't trying to say it's bad, but you know, whatever, it ain't all that. It's it's a little cute for a little yin yin yang around the house or whatever, but it ain't all that. It's cute or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I said, Fred, go sit your ass down. So they get into the, uh, you know, mediation and you got her, uh, 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 what's the girl? You know, the judge saying, Tamara and your people, you go over here and then Delilah and Leah, y'all go over here. Y'all look over what the terms and what y'all want to come up with. And then we're going to convene together. We're going to see what it is. I'm going to go through each person, you know, each side and all this stuff. And we're going to see what we're going to come in the middle with. Okay. So basically, we get Delilah and Leah doing what they're supposed to do. And then we get Fred and Tamara outside. The judge go out there to talk to Tamara and Fred and to show them what they came up with. First, um, what Fred and Tamara came up with to get to uh, Delilah and Leah, you know, Delilah was like, <laughs> no. And Leah was like, can I see? And then the judge was like, no, you cannot. <laughs> I was like, damn. All right. And so they fixed up what they wanted. And then they came, uh, the judge brought it out there to Tamara. And um, Fred, girl, they looking at it. And, um, you know, Tamara... It was this one particular part about the exoneration. Please say that, you know, Leah wasn't, you know, fired for insubordination and all that stuff. And it was the wording that really got to Fred. And Fred was like, um, would you really want me to sign this? Okay, would this hurt? Can, if I sign this and, and agree to this type of wording or whatever, will it hurt my um, bottom line? Would it hurt my company? Would it hurt my image? All that stuff or whatever. And so at this point... Tamara was like, you know, she was just, she wasn't trying to say yes. And she wasn't trying to say anything at this point. So he was like, would you sign? He was like, and, and Fred got fed the fuck up. Fred said, what did he say? He said that little, now see, I know that little bitch is in there trying to be your little soul sister or whatever. I said, hold up. <laughs> that what? That what? You know, it's something about a white man calling a black woman a bitch, okay? It's something about anybody calling a, a black woman a bitch that gets to me, you know, especially when it's in a negative way, bitch. But when a white man says it and then they from the South like this, I said, oh, you might as well have called to the N-word with a hard E-R at the end, bitch, okay? That's one step away from what he was about to call her. Because then he said, your little soul sister, I know you think your little soul sister in there is doing something or whatever, got you clouded or whatever, but you're thinking about me. So would this mess me up? Should I sign it? Bitch, Tamara literally had to think about which way she going to go with this shit. I said, really? It's a thinking? Girl, Tamara chose her partnership over anything and said, no, nah, don't sign that shit. I said, uh-uh, Tamara. You know, Tamara, I told you I can't be no defense attorney. I couldn't be no defense attorney because my integrity and my morals are set up to a little bit high. Okay? I couldn't be a sellout, bitch. Okay? I could not do that. You know? And Tamara kind of sold out a little bit for that partnership, you know, uh, they wind up signing the paper and all that stuff. And, of course, 
They got up in their feelings. Fred left. Leah, she was like, when can I get my check? I said, bitch, so it's all about the money for your ass? Basically, okay? You know, Fred was about to leave, and he was like, you know, uh, thank you for your services or some shit, you know, trying to shake Tamara's head. And Tamara left him hanging and said, you know, see you, Fred. You know, I was just like, uh-uh. After you just called my friend a bitch and you put in that little soul sister bitch and we knew what you was trying to say, ho, okay? I said, uh-uh. And Tamara, you good because, see, I'm just not set up. Like, my facial expressions would have said that. I would have not became a partner that day. Like, my partnership would have been stripped. Refund me the money that I paid to become a partner. Uh-uh. It's just not going to happen because I wouldn't have been able to do it. Bitch. After that, you know, um, Leah get her little fucking check. Come to find out. I'm just going to fast the fuck forward, okay? Um, it was something with the radios or whatever. It was a number that they found, okay? And they was trying to figure out where did this number come from. It was an internet-generated number. It was like one of them Google Voice numbers or whatever, something like that. So the number is dead, meaning nobody is on it or whatever. But they got some type of service to go back a couple of years to see all who was on that number when it went into service. Baby, they found out that the person that was at the top of the list, the last person that had that number, was Leah's ass, okay? Bitch, Leah knew all about the C-15. She knew all about the fact that it was not working because her story, it was a complete 180 of what the, um, a complete opposite of what the story she came to, uh, you know, um, Delilah about originally. She made it think like, she made it seem as though she knew absolutely nothing about what was going on. She must have stumbled over into something, and that's why she got fired. She's not understanding why she got fired. She don't know nothing about this. She heard this, and, you know, I don't know what it means or whatever. Come to find out, Leah been knew about the C-15. Leah was talking to Gary Shea about the C-15. Leah told Fred about the C-15. Leah was trying to do all of this shit. She saw a way to get some money, okay? And that's what it all boils down to. I said, bitch, girl, you know, and of course, Delilah tried to guilt trip her about uh, Nate or whatever being a part of this shit. And I was like, I don't know why you put that out there because that bitch really don't care. At that moment, I was like, girl, you need that girl need her ass whooped. And she still didn't see the errors in her way. And she was like, I'm not going to testify. I can't even say nothing. That was the agreement in the settlement. I can't say nothing no more anyway. So why don't you just let it go? She was like, you ain't got to say nothing. Just find me some type of evidence that Fred knew and Gary talked about it with him already. And he had some type of connection with uh, Rick Pattengale. Just give me some type of evidence. And sure enough, we found the evidence. It was an email um, between them that knew that it was a conversation or whatever that Gary told him about the, uh, you know, that he was having a conversation with Gary and Rick Pattengale about the C-15s or whatever. And Delilah had went up there to, uh, Fred's place, his office or whatever, and was like, listen, I don't want your ass in jail, but what I want you to do is to set up a foundation for these soldiers and their families and stuff like that, you know, as, as a form of like reparations, cause that's what also came up too in this episode. And we'll get to that in a second. And he was like, what? Why you need me to do that? Oh, because I know about this and I know about that. And I know about Rick Pattengale and this little conversation that you had. And also, I went to Rick Pattengale after trying to find him for so long. And, you know, he flipped. Okay, so basically, you in the shitter. So, you have no wiggle room in this place. So, just go ahead and donate like $100 million starting. And we'll get this off the road. I'll let you go. You know, he was like, done. Okay, I was like, oops, come to find out when Tamara was at, uh, when, um, <laughs> Delilah was at Tamara's engagement, uh, party, she said, bitch, I lied about the Rick Pattengale situation, okay? We ain't had nothing with no Rick. <laughs> I was like, ooh, sometimes you gotta lie. <laughs> Lawyer, lie or yeah, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, that was cute. I was like, they solved that shit. Leah still need her ass beat, okay? Meanwhile, when they was going through the stuff, they was trying to get in contact with Mace. Like, they needed to get in contact with him. Um, They could not find him, okay? He wasn't returning phone calls. It was some girl, I think, that had called looking for him uh, named Vita. And that was the one that he was working with last week that discovered that those wire transfers were fake, okay, from Leah. And, you know, he she offered him a job. Remember, uh, she had called Delilah and them asking for a, uh, 
reference, you know what I'm saying? A recommendation, a reference for Mace, you know, to see if he was good and all that stuff. And we still haven't heard from Mace, okay? Keep that in mind. Um, Next thing we have, let's get Gordon ass out the way right quick. Gordon really got this little girl moving in with him, okay? You know, got, you know, carrying her boxes in like a gentleman, I guess. And, you know, he was like, I'm going to go take a shower or whatever because, um, you know, Maya got this little program or something that she doing. And she was like, well, I want to go too. I want to be supportive or whatever. And he was like, no, girl, that's a little bit too soon. It was like, oh, because of Delilah, like, she going to have to get over it. I said, bitch, you cheat. You is the bitch that came between him and her. Okay, is she going to have to get over it? No, bitch. Mama trying to play stepmama in too, too soon, okay? We're not about to do that. Stay in the child's place. That's what you are. You are a child in my ass. I don't care, okay? Because you a student. You know, I don't care if you in your 20s when you broke up this marriage or whatever. It was already broken, but you was the camel that broke, broke the uh, back, okay? Um, the straw that broke the camel's back. That's what you did. I was not here for I said, girl, bag down. And then she was like, Delilah gonna have to get over it. And he was like, it's not because of Delilah. It's because of Maya. And she had to read between the lines, which I'm surprised she was able to do. Okay, because mama don't look too bright. I'm just saying, no shade. You know? And um, she got it. The little girl don't like your ass. That's what it is, okay? You know, because Gordon looked like the type that would have brought that girl there just to spite Delilah, okay? But, you know, Maya said, uh-uh, I'm not really here for this bitch, so, you know, it is what it is, okay? So, uh, at this point, after all of that, we get over there to Tamara and Casey, right? So, Tamara and Casey, they have their little dinner or whatever, and, um... You know, she was like, first of all, what I need you to tell me is, I need you to tell me about this whole situation about you being up in Riley, okay? Remember that he left last week and just in the middle of the night and wrote her, wrote her a letter, not typed it up, not sent a text, not sent a voice message, not told her to her face, wrote her a letter that, you know, he was finna be gone and he'll be back soon. I said, what in the route from Real Housewives of Atlanta is going on? He picked up and went to Riley and it's been a few days and she still don't know where he went. Uh, why he went down there, who he went down there with, what was down there. She don't know nothing. And he was like, listen, listen, I can't tell you right now. But, you know, I'll tell you soon what it is. And he was being real sketchy. She was like, well, we not getting married until you tell me. I said, girl, girl, kick his ass out until he tell your ass, okay? And cut him off, all right? Cut all of that off. Cut that, the nether regions, these lips off. Cut them all off, both sex, okay? Because what you not going to do is play me. I don't care, like, I told y'all, I don't think he was cheating, bitch, but what if he got some whole nother family out there in Riley? They, girl, I don't know, a baby or something, but I don't think it's that, okay? But then he started telling her about the reparation tax or whatever, that bill that Jamal was talking to Delilah about, come to find out. It's from when we know, and people not wanted to sign it. And when a uh, singer is the one that don't really want to do it or whatever, when Junior is the one that wrote it up, okay, uh, and he's not signing it. So of course Tamara goes over there to Win Junior, cussing him out. And when she said, "Bitch, I'm not your reparation," because she was like, "Listen, you need to um take your name off of that, take your name off that shit." And truth be told, if you don't do that shit. I'm a fucking leave, okay? I am a partner here, but bitch, I leave. I said, oh, so it take a reparation bill to get your bu bu uh, blood boil enough for you to threaten to leave. Not this bullshit that you was doing that's threatening your friendship, but this, that's what gets you to leave. I said, tell me you full of shit, but okay, at least you stand it up for something, bitch, because I was, I was concerned. I was concerned. Um, you know, she was like, I am not your reparation. I said, oh, okay. You're not his reparation. Mm -hmm. You know, when Junior was like, uh, basically, what we got to do is, since you are a partner, and it's true, he do need her. And I do think, after looking at this scene, I do think he kind of respect her a little bit. Because he could have told her, you can go to fuck the hell. And I can find another black lawyer to take your place, okay? I, it, it's a whole bunch of them that want to get up in here to come a dime a dozen, bitch. I can find anybody that got compromised morals and integrity and whatever to take your place. But no, he said, since you're a partner, like, we can go in on this together and try to get my daddy up out of this bitch, okay? And she was like, okay, cool. He was like, I mean, give it some 
time. You know, I don't get this name for nothing. You know, I got a line weight like I always do. You get uh used to that shit. And he and she was like, Well, how long we gotta wait? How long this gonna take? He said, maybe a year or two. She said, a year or two? Bitch, what? He said, I mean, this what we gotta do. Shit don't happen right off the bat. And she was like, all right, all right, cool. Whatever. You know, we'll do that. Meanwhile, it's Del uh, Tamara had called Delilah after the whole mediation and stuff, making sure she was gonna come to her engagement party or whatever. T Delilah said, "Yeah, girl, I'll be there. I'll be there. Whatever." She was tired. She didn't want to talk about nothing else. That case has drawn drained the life out of her. So they get to the engagement party. <laughs> I don't want to ever listen to me and listen to me good. If I ever get successful in life, like to the point, my version of success, um, and my version of success is not being rich and famous or whatever. My, my version of success is, you know, being happy, 100% happy or damn near 95% or whatever, being happy in what I'm doing and being passionate about it and following my dreams on that and just making it happen for myself and being financially secure. I don't need to be rich. You know what I'm saying? I just need to be financially secure. You know, I just need to be happy, you know, and I just need to be doing something that I love. You know what I'm saying? And making it my life thing. That's, girl, actually not changing. And I know people say that all the time and then they get to where they need to go and they switch up. When I tell you Ashley can't change because, listen, I can't be that fake and I ain't that bougie bitch like that, okay? Because, baby, baby, I said, um, Tamara, where you grow up at? I mean, I know we supposed to mature when we grow up and we get older or whatever. But I was looking at that engagement party and I said, I know Casey is the deputy mayor or whatever, but... <sighs> It was so stuffy. It was so rigid. And for them to be black people, melanated people and everything, I said, where is the soul in this engagement party? Man, we ain't even got the right. We got some bougie-ass classical music. Ain't no problem with that, but shit. I'm ready to go home after I just stepped up in that bitch, okay? I said, uh, in the art gallery or whatever. I was like... I mean, y'all look like the type. Look at where y'all live, Dad. But y'all look like the type. But damn, throw some little barbecue music on or whatever. Like, I don't know. It just, I just said I could never. It was so bougie and stuffy. And I just said no. And so, you know, Casey and, and, and Tamara staring, standing right next to the mayor. Okay, Madam Mayor. And then uh, Delilah comes in with her kids. And, of course, Tamara going on about how Maya is this a great musician. And, you know, Marcus is a little singer and all this stuff. And the mayor is like, we need y'all. Once y'all blow up, become rich and famous or whatever. Stay in uh, Charlotte. Okay, don't go out to L.A. and all that stuff. Stay here. And I was like, okay. Um... So Tamara have a conversation. Casey just leaves off, okay, because he needs to go handle something, you know. And um, Tamara and Kay, uh, uh, Delilah having a little conversation, and Delilah picks up on the fact that, you know, things ain't really copacetic and all the way great between Casey and Tamara at this point. And she brings up the fact that, you know, he went to rally, didn't tell me, and I still don't know. And she was like, hmm, interesting. So while they having a little conversation, Jamal comes walking over there. Jamal came walking over there like he knew he was fine, bitch. <laughs> Jamal was like... I was like, I ain't even look at Jamal like that, but the way he walked over there, I said, mm, Delilah, you better get up on that, like, get up on that like a pogo stick, bitch. I said, girl, he came walking like, I'm the shit, bitch, and I'm finna get this lady. I said, all right, Jamal. <laughs> Okay, that was the um that was Delilah's inner conscious that was talking. You know that's how she was acting when she saw him. She was trying to keep it cool, but inside she was like, <laughs> and then she gonna tell him something. <laughs> I miss our parties. I was like, girl, you corny, but that's cute. That's cute. Okay, you know, so she meets his uh meet the son and the daughter and all that stuff. And uh at this point, uh, Marcus had said, you know. Uh, no, Jamal had was like, what's up, little man, and all this stuff, they having a little conversation, he was like, you know, I can play the piano, and it was like, oh, for real, come show me then, I said, oops, what's gonna happen, at this point, after Tamara and them was talking, you know, Tamara was like, did you invite Harper, and she was like, no, girl, what's up, she was like, there she go right there, Harper comes in with this distressed look on her face, and Delilah goes over there, 
to see what's up. Um, and so at this point, we got Marcus up there with uh Jamal singing because they was comparing him to little Marvin Gaye. So they singing Marvin Gaye, Jamal up on the um pianos or whatever. Marcus is just doing his little thing. I was like, you better sing, boy, sing little Marcus, go off. And then we get to Delilah talking to Harper. Harper was like, listen, I was trying to call you, but you weren't answering the phone. Um, you know, some detectives or whatever, they looking for Mace, okay? Because the lady that was connected to him, that beat a chick, they can't find that bitch. Or something, I don't know if she came up missing or if she was dead or some shit like that. Either way, it was bad and the main suspect that they looking for is Mace because he was the last person to be seen with her. I said, oh my goodness, gave his whole goddamn government Mr. Mace Cunningham. I said, Mace, Mace didn't do nothing. They setting him up, and I have a feeling it could be something to do with Fred, okay? Or it can be leading into the next case that we're about to get into. But I really do hope that Delilah comes back for a new season because this was just the initial season to get us, you know, get us warm us, taste our uh, um, tinkle our little taste buds just a little bit. Uh, I did like it. I did enjoy it. If it comes back for another season, which I pr I hope it does. And, um, actually been here to review it again, but you know, there was a cute little episode, cute little uh, cliffhanger. I just don't want it to be like ambitions. Okay. I was so much into ambitions and ambitions. I hope I'm saying it right. Yeah. You know, at this time of night, my tongue get thick and it just don't come out right. But y'all know exactly what Sean talking about. And they cut it off after the first season. It was so good. I was so mad. All right. But you know. Hey, shit happens. You guys tell me how you feel, and I will see you guys later. Peace. I almost forgot Nate, bitch. Let me tell you something. Nate is just, he's a special case, okay? He is, he feels like he's one of those real, real romantical type of person. He believes in love and, you know, trying to exhaust every option and, you know, trying to do whatever he can, he can to win a person back. He's sitting there with his dad and I guess the lady that's on his case to try to figure out where he's going to stay, a uh, nursing or lawn care facility, assistant living facility. And they was waiting for Christine to come. And the reason why he wanted Christine there is because this is the place so that she can have a say on the place where Dion is supposed to come and, um, you know, visit him. And I said, I mean, I guess I understand that, but Nate don't understand that Christine don't want nothing to do with him at all at this point you know and truth be told christine looked like the spiteful person that'll probably keep his child away from him and so the daddy you know he stepped up and said why don't you just stay with me and francis him and his wife or whoever she is and she will convert the backyard shed or garage into like this home you have your own little um you know bathroom situation dining room kitchen and all that stuff you know and he'll watch the kid and all this shit or whatever. And he was like, you know, I wasn't there for y'all when y'all was younger, but let this make... He was basically trying to make up for it, you know. And then uh, Delilah had came up there trying to talk to Nate about some stuff. And she had Demetria with her. And we find out that Delilah issue is the fact that Delilah's father cheated on the mom when she was young. The mom drank and ate herself to death. She drank the ate herself into a stroke and then died right in front of Delilah. Um, and I guess the woman that he cheated on her with, he wound up being with, and that was Francis, you know? And so uh, he was never at any of her events, never came and talked to her, never picked them up, never did anything. So that's why she got this deep-seated issue with him. And, you know, Nate was trying to say, like, basically he trying, okay? I'm going to stay with him. It is what it is. And truth be told, I understand that Delilah got issues with the dad, but your issues probably aren't the same issues that Nate has, okay? So you can't put your issues on him. Yes, y'all probably was in a similar situation, in the same situation, but he perceived it differently. So you can't be mad if he want to be, give the dad a, another chance and you not, you know, but... What wound up happening is they did have a conversation and he basically said that he retired and he's going to be there for Nate and um, Dion. And I was like, hmm. And even Delilah said, well, you know, when Nate gets settled, we'll come over there and we'll have family dinner. I was like, oh, OK, we'll see how long that union ship lasts. But anyway, that is the end of it. I didn't want to miss that. You guys, I'll see y'all later. Peace.